In this video, we're going to look at using AudioSuite plugins in Pro Tools. As we've discussed in previous videos, AudioSuite plugins are non-real-time plugins that either create a new audio file or modify an original file. There are essentially five steps to using an AudioSuite plugin in Pro Tools. The first step is selecting the audio to be processed. You can select any combination of complete clips or even partial clips on a track's playlist, and you also have the option of selecting clips in the clip list. We'll go ahead and select these two clips down on the synth track, as well as some silent sections. The second step is simply to select the Audio Suite plugin. For this example, we'll use Normalize. First, we'll go to the Audio Suite menu, then the Other submenu, and choose Normalize. Step three is to configure the Audio Suite controls, which are the controls that are found in all Audio Suite plugins. First, we have the plugin selector, which can be used to choose an alternate plugin if necessary. Next, we have the selection reference. This is where we specify whether to use the selection on the playlist or the selection in the clip list. Next, we have the use in playlist control. When it's selected, which is the blue highlight, and the selection reference is set to playlist, the currently selected audio will be replaced by the newly processed clips. If the selection reference is set to clip list, all occurrences of the selected clips in the session will be replaced. If it's deselected, the newly processed audio will appear in the clip list, but will not replace the audio that's selected on the track's playlist. Typically, you'll want use in playlist to be selected. Next, we have the processing output mode selector, and there are three options available here. If we choose overwrite files, then the original files on disk will be destructively overwritten by the newly processed audio. When this processing output mode is enabled and you click the render button, a dialog box will appear asking you to verify that you want to overwrite the original files on disk and letting you know that this cannot be undone later. The next processing output mode option is to create individual files. With this mode selected, clicking the render button will result in each clip or partial clip being processed independently from the other clips that you have selected. Notice that both of my clips remained individual clips. The third mode here is Create Continuous File. With this mode selected, clicking the Render button will render all of the selected audio and silence into a single continuous clip. Generally, Create Individual Files is the output mode that you'll want to use, although occasionally Create Continuous File can be useful. Because of its destructive nature, Overwrite Files is almost never used in Pro Tools. Finally, we have the Processing Input Mode selector, which determines how the Audio Suite plugin will perform its analysis if you have multiple clips selected. If you choose the first option, Clip by Clip, then a process like Normalize will analyze and process each clip independently. If you choose the second option, Entire Selection, the plugin will analyze all of the clips together and treat them as if they were a single clip. Generally, Clip by Clip is the more useful of these two settings, but there are times, especially when using Dynamics plugins, when you'll want to analyze the entire selection. Our fourth step is to configure the plugin parameters. These parameters will be unique to each plugin. In our case, we may want to do a typical normalize to minus 0.1 dB, which will result in clips that are normalized to almost full scale, but will remain just below clipping. Because we're analyzing multi-channel audio, we also have the channel mode selector. Here we can choose Mono Mode to analyze the data on each channel independently, or Multi-Input Mode, which will maintain the relative relationship between data on all channels. In our case, we'll want to use Multi-Input Mode to make sure that the left-right volume relationship is preserved. Now we're almost ready to render our processed audio. One last setting we'll want to look at is the Handle Length setting at the bottom of the Audio Suite window. This determines the maximum amount of audio at the beginning and end of the selected clips that will be available after applying the audio suite process. The default is two seconds, which is enough for most music and post applications. Note that many clips will not have additional audio at the beginning or end, in which case this setting will have no effect. Now we're ready to go ahead and click render, and we can see the result of all of our audio suite settings on the tracks playlist. If we look at the newly rendered files in the clip list, you'll be able to see that the clip name has been appended with a four-letter abbreviation for the Audio Suite plugin. In this case, we can see Norm, which indicates the normalization process. 
This can be helpful when you're trying to find process clips in the clip list. So that's an overview of Audio Suite Processing in Pro Tools. You'll definitely want to try out all of the different settings to better understand how they impact the processing of your files.